together and welcome each other this morning. Here we go. Ready? Just an old-fashioned touch. We need so much. Just an old-fashioned touch from Jesus. Just an old-fashioned song to hum and sing along. A song of love and grace. Just an old-fashioned man with the word in his hand who will stand and declare he is Lord. Just an old-fashioned touch we need so much. Just an old-fashioned touch from the Lord. Just an old-fashioned touch from the Lord. Well, amen. Can we join together and sing that one more time? Let's do it. Just an old-fashioned touch. We need so much. Just an old-fashioned touch from Jesus. Just an old-fashioned song to hum and sing along. A song of love and grace. Just an old-fashioned man with the word in his hand who will stand and declare he is Lord. Just an old-fashioned touch we need so much. Just an old-fashioned touch from the Lord. Just an old-fashioned touch from the How about that, Brother Tim Willis? Isn't he something? <laughs> um, there's not too many announcements this morning. I do need to say uh, that Hunter has requested that if you're going to come to his class this evening, please bring your Bible with you. Is that correct, Hunter? Okay. That, bring your Bible. All right. Um, and uh, in case you haven't noticed, we do have a, a special group with us here from Ridgecrest Baptist Church. Y'all are so welcome. Thank you for being here. Amen. Amen. And look at this crowd. Our church exploded over and over the week. It's great. Um, we're going to come into a time of prayer now, and we're going to do something a little different this morning. Um, I'm going to ask that if you feel so led, come down to the altar and pray. Silent prayer. Um, you know, usually we reserve that for the invitation hymn. And historically, that's the way that it's been done. When I was a kid, I can remember countless times that people would come down to the altar and pray during the invitation hymn. But um, Brother Tim and, and Brother Dan and I were talking last week, and our altar is dusty and abandoned. Amen. Because we do not spend enough time here praying to God. He's here. Amen. All we have to do is come to him. And it doesn't have to be because there's something wrong with you or because... You're, something's wrong with any part of your life. It can be to come here to praise Jesus for a victory in your life, for a victory in a friend's life. It's not about um, what people think of you because of the reason that you came down here. It's not about that. It's not their business. It's between you and God. It's, it's, that's the only two people who have to know why you're here. And so I'm going to definitely ask that, you know, if you feel led, Belinda's going to play. Um, we do have a prayer request, to, a special request, um, Brother Jan, uh, Miss, <laughs> Brother Jan, Miss Jan's uh, brother John is back in the hospital. He has had a, some setbacks with his multiple myeloma, so we want to definitely say a special prayer for him. But um, whatever need you have, whatever you need to pray about, um, if you can't make it here or if you can't kneel at the altar, feel free to come to the front row and sit. Or just pray to yourself where you are. You, we come to Jesus just like we are. Amen. That's, that's all. And it's, it's very easy. So um, 
I'm, I'll start it off. I, I, will, I will go to the altar and pray while Belinda plays. Father, we come to you now in all of your power. Lord, we come in all of your presence among us. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of being able to come and worship you without fear of persecution or imprisonment or any of the things that so many people in the world have to worry about when they worship you, Lord. And we thank you that we live in a country where we can do that. And God, we thank you so much for the blessings that you so freely pour out upon us or the grace that you give us so abundantly. God, we thank you for that. Or for those that are here today, we thank you for their presence. We thank you for them for braving the cold weather. God, we, we pray that you move mightily today. Be with Brother Danny as he gives our message. Be with our choir as we sing. Be with Brother Tim as he sings. And God, just touch each heart. Make us desperate for you. Desperate for your word. And Lord, we pray that you show us, show us what it is that you want us to be in life. God, just help us to follow you. And, and just know that if we trust you, that, that you'll do something that only you can do. And God, we thank you again for the, the chance to be here and to worship and to praise you. And we pray all of this in your mighty and powerful name. Amen. Thank you, Kevin, so much for leading out in prayer. You know, prayer is an active response of worship. You know, the Bible says that uh, we have not because we ask not. And I truly believe that prayer is the answer to a lot, of the, what are the, a lot of the problems that we're experiencing in this world today. And I pray that through corporate prayer that each and every one of us would draw closer to each other as we draw closer to the Lord. Let's stand together as we begin our time of worship together. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's sing out. Ready, here we go. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made.
Let the Lord sing that again. Here we go. Ready? This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. <laughs> the day that the Lord had made. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed His infinite mercy. His child and forever I That's it. Redeem, redeem, redeem by the blood of the Lamb. And so happy in Jesus, no language my rapture can tell. I know that. The light of his presence with me doth continually dwell. Redeem, redeem, redeemed <coughs> by the blood of the Lamb. Redeem his infinite mercy, his child, and forever I am. Thank you so much. I think of my blessed Redeemer. I think of him all the day long. I sing, for I cannot be silent. His love is the theme of my song. I pray that's the way it is with you today. Let's sing that last verse together. Ready? I think of my blessed Redeemer. I think of him all the day long. I sing, for I can't be silent. Love is the theme. Here we go. Ready? Redeem, redeem, redeem by the blood of the Lamb. Redeem through His infinite mercy, His child and forever. Am. Thank you so much. You may be seated. <coughs> I want to thank my friends and fellow Sunday school members at Ridgecrest Baptist Church for coming and being a part of our worship today. We love and appreciate each and every one of you and ask for your continued prayers and all for us as we allow God to lead us here at Webb. Just the time I feel that I've been caught in the mire of self. And just the time I feel my mind's been bought by worldly wealth. That's when the breeze begins to blow. I know it's the Spirit's call. And all my worldly wanderings just melt into his love and oh I want to know you more deep within my soul I want to know you oh I want to know you to feel your heart and know your mind looking in your eyes stirs up within me Cries that say, I want to know you. Oh, I want to know you more. When my daily deeds ordinarily lose life and song. My heart begins to bleed, sensitivity 
to him is lost. I've run the race, I've set my own pace and face a shattered soul. But the gentle arms of Jesus warm my hungering to be whole. And oh, I want to know you more. Deep within my soul, I want to know you. Oh, I want to know you, to feel your heart and know your mind. Looking in your eyes, stirs up within me, cries that say, I want to know you. Oh, I want to know you, and I will give my final breath. To know you in your death and resurrection. Oh, I want to know you more. Oh, I want to know you, to know you more. Oh, I want to know you. Let's stand together again as we continue on with our time of worship and praise. Oh, how he loves you and me. the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me a sinner condemned unclean how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my sin his love for me. He took my sins and my sorrows. He made them his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my Savior's love for me let's pray brother John
It is so good to be here at Web Baptist Church today, and, uh, and we're so grateful for our new members. I told them that uh, if they come one time, they're stuck. They've got to keep coming, and, uh, and I'll, uh, I'll get with Brother Ray and explain that to him a little bit later today. But it's so great to have you all with us, and, and we're just so grateful for you being here. And, and uh, I just want you to know we love Brother Tim and Wanda and Doris, and we're going to take good care of them. And, uh, and you're most welcome to come back anytime and worship with us. And while we're speaking of coming back anytime to worship, folks, listen, you need to mark Sunday, April 2nd on your calendar. That is Palm Sunday. And in the evening, right here at Webb Baptist Church at 4 p.m. Is that right, Brother Tim? We will be having our Easter cantata. And uh, Jan, uh, this is my beautiful Jan on the second pew here. Uh, next to that crazy lady, and, and so uh, uh, Jan has shared with me the uh, recording of the, the music, and I'm telling you, it is so worshipful, and Brother Tim, I don't know if you need to have a choir vote on this or not, but I'd like to come sing with y'all, so y'all might want to take a vote first, make sure about that, but I'll be rehearsing with you this afternoon and, be, and beyond, but I, I, I love it, it's beautiful music, we all need to come and be a part of this worshipful experience, because that's what it is. It is a service of worship, and, uh, and Belinda Jan played the song that you're going to be singing. And man, that is a beautiful song, and I know you'll, you'll honor it with your voice unto the Lord. Uh, please take your Bibles with me this morning, and turn with me to John chapter 17, and I will begin reading... Verse 1. Now while you're turning there, let me make one more promo, and that is this coming Saturday at 5 p.m., our men will be serving uh, fresh cooked grilled hamburgers and hot dogs, and we'll be having dinner and a movie night. And so bring your, 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 uh, your wife, your husband, uh, your girlfriend, your fiancé, bring your children and plan to come and be a part of this very special night. The food's going to be great. And the movie is What If. It's about 13 years old, but it is one of the best Christian movies I've ever heard with Kevin Sorbo. And the message is powerful. And, uh, and I, it is so good, I will give an invitation of sorts at the end of the movie. And uh, come and be a part of that. Invite friends to come. Uh, we'll have plenty to eat. Is that right, Jamar? We'll, we'll have plenty to eat. So invite friends to come. And let's just let this be a wonderful evening. We will have a few offering buckets so you can give an offering. You don't have to take my lead, but what Jan and I usually do when we do this is we'll give an offering equivalent to what it would have cost had we gone out and, and eaten someplace and, uh, uh, and, and went to a, a movie, which we don't do very often. Uh, so, but you give whatever you want to give, and it will go to the general fund of the church. And uh, I know you'll be blessed mainly just by coming and being here and inviting friends to come. That is this coming Saturday, 5 o'clock, in, in the fellowship hall, and it's going to be a great evening. Uh, if you have turned to John 17, we're going to get there in just a minute, but I'd like to begin with one passage of Scripture in the book of Luke, chapter 19. And in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, Jesus simply said this, The Son of Man has come to seek and to save those who are lost. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save those who are lost. In that one short little verse, folks, He pretty much stated His entire mission for coming here. To seek and to save those who are lost. Now, if you've turned to John 17, let me read verse 1 and continuing for you. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up His eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify Your Son, that Your Son also may glorify You, as You have given Him authority over all flesh, that He should give eternal life to as many as You have given to Him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have glorified you on this earth. I have finished the work. Now notice the word finished there. I have finished the work 
which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory which I had with you before the world ever was. Before the world was. Now, if you will, take your, your fingers and turn over in your Bible about three pages to the right, and we're going to go to John chapter 19, and I'd like to call your attention to verse 28. John 19, verse 28. And after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, another word for that word accomplished is finished, all things are finished, they are accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on hyssop, and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit and died. It is finished. The title of the message is, Mission Accomplished. Mission Accomplished. Now what was Jesus' mission? It was the first passage of Scripture I read to you. To seek and to save those who are lost. It is finished. Mission Accomplished. Let's talk about that for a little bit this morning. If you will, turn over in your New Testament to the book of Colossians, and this will be our text for the message today. Colossians chapter 1, beginning with verse 13. Colossians 1, verse 13. Speaking of Jesus, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for by Him all things were created that are in heaven, that are on earth, that are visible, that are invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, and then the scripture says all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in him all things consist. Folks, we're talking about a mighty God, a mighty Savior. And this marvelous Jesus is God himself come down to man in flesh. All things are held together in the palm of his hand. I love that spiritual that was penned many, many years ago. He's got the whole world where? Someone answer me. In His hands. It's all in His hands. He holds it all together and it all consists. It's held together <clears throat> in His hands. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things He might have the preeminence. But then notice verse 19 with me, please. For it pleased the Father that in Him all the fullness should dwell, and by Him to reconcile all things to Himself, by Him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of His cross, and you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, Yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through his death to present you holy and blameless and beyond reproach in his sight. Let's talk about the mission that Jesus accomplished on this earth. First of all, we notice in our text today that he delivered us. Look again at verse 13 of Colossians chapter 1. It says, He has delivered us from the power of darkness, and then He conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. He delivered us from the power of darkness. What that tells me is He delivered us from the power of sin. 
He delivered us from the destruction of sin. He delivered us from the terrible, horrific consequences of a life lived in sin. The Bible tells us the wages of sin is death. But then I love how that verse concludes. But the gift of God is what? Eternal life through Jesus Christ, His Son. In Jesus, we are delivered from the domain of sin. We're delivered from the consequences of sin. We're delivered from sin's destruction. I love what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. He said, for God made Him, Jesus, who knew no sin, He made Him to become sin, so that we who are sin might become the righteousness of God. Now let that soak in just a few minutes. God made Jesus, who knew no sin, who was perfect and sinless, to become sin. What does that mean? It means that on the cross of Calvary, where He spoke those words, it is finished, He was so covered with your sins and mine that when you looked at Him, you saw sin hanging there. He became sin. Not with His sins, but with our sins. God made Him, He who knew no sin, to become sin so that we who, when you look at us, you say, there goes sin. That is walking sin. So that we who are sin might cease to be sin and become the righteousness of God. Oh, folks, will you hear what the Word of God is telling us today? Jesus died on the cross to deliver us from the wages of sin. Let's all recite John 3.16 together. Shall we do that? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Did you read that with all your heart? For God, through Jesus, made it possible for us not to perish, but through Him, instead of perishing, to give us everlasting life. Through Jesus, we are delivered from sin. But there's a second thing that He accomplished when He died on that cross that day. Not only did He deliver us from the power of sin, but He redeemed us from slavery to sin. He bought us out of slavery and freed us from our captivity. We find that in verse 14 of our text this morning. Colossians chapter 1, verse 14. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin. In Him we have redemption. In verse 13 it says, He delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. In Him we have redemption. Now the word redeemed was a very common word that the the Hebrews spoke many times in many settings. It simply means to buy. He bought us. We were slaves in sin and Jesus' blood on the cross was the price paid for you. And for me. If someone ever tells you you ain't worth much, you you need to say this. I was paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. I was bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. And through Him, I was redeemed. Satan held me captive. He held me in prison. He held me in confinement to sin to His program on this earth, to His plan for my life, Satan had me captive. And Jesus' blood bought me free. Jesus redeemed me through His blood. All folks, don't let anyone ever tell you you ain't worth much. Because you're worth the very death of Jesus Christ on Calvary's hill to buy you and me out of slavery and sin. Well, there's a third thing that Jesus accomplished on that cross that day. Not only did He deliver us, not only did He redeem us, but thirdly, He reconciled us. And again, we see this in our text this morning. In in Colossians chapter 1, look with me, if you will, 
at verse 20. And by Him, in fact, let's go back to verse 19. For it pleased the Father that in Him all the fullness should dwell, and by Him to reconcile all things to Himself. By Him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace, listen to this, having made peace through the blood of the cross. Not only did His blood pay the payment to set me free, but His blood reconciled me back to God. The Bible tells us that when we were in sin, we were enemies of God. If you're in Colossians, if you wish to turn back a few pages to the left, you'll end up in Ephesians, but don't turn too many pages, and go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12. That at that time, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of the promise. Now listen to this. Having no hope. That was your condition. That was my condition before Jesus saved me. Having no hope. No hope. And without God in this world. I love what Paul said in Romans chapter 5. For when we were enemies, verse 10 of Romans 5, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son. No hope. Enemies of God. That was our condition before Christ came into our hearts, before we received Jesus as our Savior. Hopeless. Enemies of God. There may be someone here this very morning who has never opened up your heart and asked Jesus to come into you and save you and forgive you. And I've got some wonderful news for you today. You can do it now. Jesus died on the cross for your sins for all time. And yes, you can this very morning pray a simple childlike prayer and say, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sin. Give me the everlasting life that you died to make possible for me to enjoy. And He will come into your heart right now, this very minute. He died to reconcile us, we who were enemies, to bring us back to God. I love what John says about it in his Gospel. John chapter 1 and verse 10. What a marvelous message John gives us about the power of God through Christ to redeem us. Because in John 1.10, he says he was in the world. The world was made through him. We read that in Colossians, didn't we? The world was made through him, but the world did not know him. To put it another way, the world did not recognize him. To put it another way, the world did not receive him. The world rejected him. And then in verse 11, John makes that plain. He said he came to His own people, but His own people rejected Him. They did not receive Him. But notice with me verse 12 of John chapter 1. But as many, I love this, as many as received Him, He gave the right. One translation says He gave the power to become the children of God. To those who believe in His name. These are the ones who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor even of the will of man, but they are born of God. Oh, will you see what Jesus did on Calvary's cross? He reconciled us to God. We were enemies of God, and yet through the blood of Jesus Christ, He comes to us and He says, I welcome you into the family. And through the blood of Christ, we can be transformed from enemies of God to God's dear children. Is that not an amazing feat to accomplish on that cross? It is finished. He accomplished the mission. He turned us from enemies to dear children of God. But there's another thing that Jesus accomplished on Calvary's cross. And we find it in Ephesians again. We were in Ephesians. Turn back to Ephesians chapter 2 one more time. And this time go with me please to verse 4. Ephesians 2 verse 4. But God who is rich in mercy because of His great love with which He loved us. 
Even when we were, listen to this, when we were dead, dead, dead in trespasses, what did he do? He made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And he has raised us up together. Raised us up together. That means raised us from our death, our deadness in sin. Raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Oh, will you understand that when Jesus died on that cross, He died, and I mean He really died. And they took Him down from that cross and they put Him in a tomb. And we're getting close to that day when all the world begins to celebrate the wondrous victory that we find in that tomb that early Sunday morning. Because the tomb could not hold Him there, could it? The Bible tells us Jesus rose from the dead. But I want you to know something. Because Jesus rose from the dead, other people can rise from the dead too. You and I can be raised from our deadness and sin. And we can be risen to everlasting life in Jesus Christ. Remember John 3.16? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have what? Everlasting, what's that last word? Life. Say that word with me again. Life. He died to give us life. He raised us up to have everlasting life. Quite often we hear the passage I'm about to read to you from 1 Corinthians 15 at a graveside of a Christian believer. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 25, we see these words, For he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet, and the last enemy that will be destroyed is death itself. He rose again to overcome the power of death. In that same chapter, near the end of the chapter, in verse 54 of 1 Corinthians 15, the Bible says, so when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, listen to this, I love it, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Brother Tim, don't we love to sing victory in Jesus. Therefore, verse 58, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, be immovable, be always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing this, that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. For a believer in Jesus Christ, that grave is not the end of the journey, is it? It's the launching pad. It just starts at that point. It begins because there is new life, everlasting life, as John reported, in Jesus. Because Jesus died on that cross, we can be raised up from the dead. I think one of the most treasured things that we Baptists have is our hymnal. And whether it's the one that we, we sing from that was written just a few years ago or one that was written 50 or 60 or 70 years ago, there are such marvelous messages in the hymnal. Here's one, page 294. If you want to turn in your hymnal to it, you may. One day, one day when heaven was filled with His praises, one day when sin was as black as can be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is He. One day they led Him up Calvary's mountain. One day they nailed Him to die on the tree, suffering anguish, despised and rejected, bearing our sins. My Redeemer is He. One day they left Him alone in the garden. One day He rested from suffering free. Angels came down o'er His tomb to keep vigil. Hope of the hopeless, my Savior is He. One day the grave could conceal Him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door. Then He rose over death. 
He had conquered, now is ascended, and Lord evermore. One day the trumpet will sound for His coming. One day the skies with His glories will shine. Wonderful day, my beloved ones bringing. Glorious Savior, this Jesus is mine. Living, He loved me. Dying, He saved me. Buried, He carried my sins far away. Rising, He justified freely forever. One day He's coming. Oh, glorious day. And then I think we all will sing this song sometime around Easter, number 321. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God all the vain things that charm me most I sacrificed them to His blood. See, from His head, His hands, His feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet? Are thorns compose so rich a crown? But all this hymn would be incomplete if we didn't read this final stanza. Were the whole realm of nature mine, that were a present far too small. Love so amazing, so divine. And oh, don't you love this last, this last line? Demands my soul, my life, my all. As we come to the time of the invitation this morning, I wish to make this appeal to you today. And that is when you understand that when Jesus died on that cross, listen to me, He died for you. He died for me. And there is not a sin that you have ever committed or ever will commit that is beyond the ability of the blood that Jesus shed on that cross to wash you clean, to make you whiter than snow and perfectly sinless. I invite you today, if you've never really been sure of whether or not you have opened up your heart and let Jesus come in, that you'll make it sure today. That you will nail it down today and say, today I know that I know that I know that I opened up my heart and I let Jesus come into my heart. Jesus said it this way. You cannot improve on how He said it. He said, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. And if any man hears my voice and opens the door I will come in I will come in there may be someone here today who senses that knocking of Jesus on your heart's door and you say now brother Danny I've been a church member for many, for many years and, and that's wonderful but if you have never let Jesus come into your heart then you need to do it today you need to do it now That death that He suffered, that horrible death on that cross, the humiliation, the agony, the anguish, the torment, the torture, it was for you and for me. He died to buy our pardon. He died to reconcile us, enemies of God, and make us children of God. He died to wash away every sin. We Baptists love to sing, what can wash away my sin? You know the answer, what is it? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, will you invite Him into your heart today? I've got an idea that most of the folks here in this room today are believers in Jesus Christ. So what would the invitation be to you? I would say begin to treasure and cherish And value that price He paid for you more now than ever before. See that death on the cross as an expression of total divine love for you. And there's only one answer we can give to God. And that's that last line of that last hymn I read. It demands my soul, my life, my all. Would you say, Lord Jesus... Today, more than any other day, I surrender completely. Have your way in me. 
do as you please to do in my life so I can somehow for the remainder, remainder of my days express my appreciation for what you did for me on Calvary's cross. When he uttered those three words, it is finished, he meant every word of it. Mission accomplished. And that is for you and for me. I'm going to ask you if you would to stand to your feet at this time and Brother Tim will come and lead us in this hymn of invitation. What is your response to this message today? If it's anything less than total surrender, then you're missing the point. Say yes to God with everything. Surrender to Him today. As we sing, would you?